Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here, let's walk through how to make a lithophane on a CNC. Lithophanes, for the uninitiated, are images that are etched into a surface that are revealed with the application of light from behind. They take advantage of the optical properties of translucent materials to create contrast. Thinner parts let more light through and appear brighter, thicker parts block more light and are darker. So to create a lithophane, we need three things. One, a grayscale image. Two, a suitable material to cut into, and three, a way to turn that image into a height map that we can machine. For my image, I'm going to pick something I think will have reasonable contrast, like this cat picture. To turn it into grayscale, I'll bring it into a photo editor and apply a black and white filter. For more control, you can use a photo editor that lets you manipulate color channels to really dial in your desired level of contrast. Then you can crop it to your desired aspect ratio, in my case 7x5 for a 3.5 inch by 2.5 inch lithophane. For my material, I'm using Corian, which is a solid surface product normally used in countertops. The easiest way to buy thinner sheets of this stuff is on the internet since most vendors are only stocked for home renovation needs. Now let's get to the software. You have a number of options here. On one end of the spectrum, you could go and create a full-blown 3D file from a grayscale height map using a program like Blender. This is kind of overkill and leaves you with an unwieldy and large STL file you then have to bring into a program like Fusion. I prefer to keep my representation of the model relatively lightweight. Meshcam is one program that'll let you do that. You can open a grayscale image directly and it will generate a 3D surface for you. In the import options, I'm going to tell Meshcam my image is 3.55 inches in X and let Meshcam figure out the appropriate dimensions in Y to preserve the aspect ratio. This is so the toolpath will overhang my material and ensure 100% coverage on my Corian if my alignment isn't exactly perfect. In the z-axis, I want the difference between the lightest white and the darkest black to be about 0.2 inches, so that's what I'm going to scale my height to. My stock material is a quarter inch thick, so that means the thinnest part of my lithophane is going to be 0.05 inches. For ease of zeroing, I'll adjust my origin point to be at the center of my stock and on the top surface. To save time, I'll set the retract height to something small, less than a sixteenth of an inch. And as far as model setup goes, that's about it. Let's talk about cutting parameters. In MeshCam, machining is broken down into two phases, roughing and finishing. In the roughing setup, I'll equip an eighth inch end mill and set my machining margin to fifteen thousandths of an inch. Make sure your tool is set to run at 10,000 RPM in the tool library. A good starting point for roughing is a .025 inch step down, 60% step over or about 0.08 inches, a feed rate of 40 inches per minute, and a plunge rate of 15 inches per minute. You can absolutely pick more aggressive settings, but this is a pretty safe starting point. On the finishing side, I'll enable a parallel toolpath in the X direction using a 1 16th inch ball end mill. I'm going with 10% of the end mill diameter, or about 6 thousandths of an inch for my step over. Feed rate here is again 40 inches per minute, but I have occasionally used feed rate override to go beyond 60. The thing you want to look out for is deep pits or craters in your model that your roughing end mill can't fit into, because then when your finishing tool comes along it will plunge the full depth of that feature, so I would lay off the feed rate override when you're cutting into these areas. One potential variation for finishing is to use a tapered ball end mill. These end mills are typically less fragile than the standard skinny end mill I'm using here, so you can be more aggressive with your cuts. And remember, there's definitely a point of diminishing returns when choosing a step over, so don't pick one that's insanely small, otherwise you're going to be standing at your CNC for many many hours. And that is a basic overview of how you can make a lithophane. When you're looking at your beautifully milled creation, make sure the bumpy side is facing you for the best clarity. I hope this helps anyone looking to make one of these things or gives you some project ideas. Good luck and have fun machining, folks.